Our next presenter is Andy Griffith. So Andy is our, one of our VAD equipment specialists, and he has worked with our VAD team for the past nine years and is an expert in VAD equipment management and maintenance. So he'll be discussing that with you now. Yeah, so my name is Andy Griffith. Yes, that's really my name. And uh, first, before I get going, uh, Chris, good to see you. You did a great job. Uh, thank you for sharing everything that, that you shared with us. That was wonderful. And um, yeah, so I'm a VAD equipment specialist. And like Sarah said, I've been on the team going on nine years now. And um, so we're going to go over some of the equipment that these patients have to carry because while they did tell of all the wonderful things about all vets, there are some, some negative things, some minor negative things. And a lot of that has to deal with carrying around uh, this equipment. So without further ado, we'll get into it. So this is a typical orientation of how you will see a HeartMate patient uh, carrying their equipment. Um, notice that there's two battery sources, and that's true for all current VADs on the market, is that they, they are always carrying two batteries, uh, regardless of, the, of which VAD that is in the chest. And uh, those two batteries are connected to a controller, and that controller is basically a miniature computer that is constantly evaluating the pump. It's also oftentimes telling the pump how fast to spin. Um, it's monitoring the pump for any error conditions, anything that falls outside of the parameters of, of normal operating. Um, and if it does sense any issues uh, with the pump, then it will trigger an alarm within the controller to alert the patient and alert the caregivers uh, that there is something that has gone wrong. So we can see from the controller leading up to the pump is what's called a drive line. And with the HeartMate 3 in particular, they added a little connection. If you see that little silver section in the drive line, um, that's an extra connection where should the external portion of the drive line become disconnected, then in clinic, the clinician can quickly and easily replace that external portion of the drive line in a matter of seconds. Um, whereas previously with the HeartMate 2, uh, they would have to go a lengthy procedure and we would fly in engineers from out of state. Uh, to do a more slicing and dicing of the drive line too, in order to replace that external section. And this, this setup here of two batteries and one controller, again, that's true no matter the device, HeartMate 2, HeartMate 3, or the HVAD from Hardware. Uh, focusing on the HeartMate products, this is the equipment that the patient will go home with. Uh, we've got a battery charger in the upper left that can carry or can charge four batteries at a time. The lower left is what we call the mobile power unit. Um, it's essentially a home AC adapter to give them wall power. Um, you know, we, we stress that patients sleep on the wall power device, the mobile power unit, because if you notice on the side there, there's these speaker holes and any alarms that their controller has, if they're connected to the mobile power unit, the mobile power unit will echo those alarms and amplify those alarms a lot louder. And so that way, if their controller is under a bunch of blankets or something, you know, it's winter time and they're covered up real well and they're sleeping, they may not hear their alarm if they're just sleeping on battery power. And so if they're connected to the mobile power unit, that will echo their alarms and amplify them and hopefully wake them up. On the right side, we have what they're carrying with them as they're walking around and not connected to the mobile power unit and that is their batteries and their battery clips. Um, I do wanna point out that the batteries, a set of fully charged batteries will last about 12 to 14 hours. So in most cases, these patients can go an entire day without worrying about changing their batteries or their controller beeping because their batteries are getting low. So the particular device that we have now for both the HeartMate 2 and HeartMate 3 patients is what's called the pocket controller. And if you can notice here in these two images, um, they are remarkably similar. In fact, they're exactly the same. The only difference is the color scheme. So the HeartMate 2 is on the left. So it's got that lighter tone going all the way around with that dark blue interface. And then the HeartMate 3 on the right is opposite a really dark blue going all the way around with a, uh, a white uh, interface. Uh, notice that the symbols, if you can see those, are there this, they are the same between the two controllers and also the two controllers have the same exact buttons. And this was something that, you know, we were slightly disappointed when the HeartMate 3 first came out, we first started planning it. You know, we were all excited, especially me as the equipment guy. 
I was excited for new equipment and, you know, looking to see something different. I can't wait to see what they invented and came out with. And then they announced that, you know, the HeartMate 3 was going to have the same exact equipment as the HeartMate 2. And I was a bit disappointed until we started training people. And then we realized, wow, or at least I realized, wow, this is actually great for training staff because I essentially don't have to train them because they're already trained on the HeartMate 2 equipment. And this is the same exact equipment. So I think in the end, I appreciate that they didn't change up any of the batteries or any of the other equipment because it made it much smoother transition throughout the health system uh, to transition to start caring for HeartMate 3 patients. This is a close up of the interface of the controller. Um, starting up at the top left, we have the battery button. And that simply displays how much battery power is connected to the controller when you push that. Um, in the center of the top, there's a very important pump running symbol. Uh, these are two arrows that will turn green when the pump is running. And this is a nice peace of mind that no matter what alarm is going on, we can look at those arrows and have um, peace of mind that the pump is actually running. Uh, we have this screen there in the center right. All the way to the right, the round button with the square on it, that is the display button. And that simply shows the pump numbers, whether it's speed, flow, pulse utility index, and the power being consumed. Um, down at the very bottom of the left is the alarm silence button. This is my favorite button. Uh, whenever there's alarms going on, it can be hard to think and hard to concentrate on what's actually happening. And so it's nice to be able to silence those alarms to kind of get your headspace for a minute and focus on what's going on. Uh, focusing on the far left side of the controller, we have these little like half moon or almost telephone looking symbols. And those are our cable disconnect symbols. And what that shows if, is if any of the cables come disconnected, whether it's the power cables or the driveline cable, um, that one of those half moons will illuminate, letting you know, hey, this particular cable has become disconnected from the controller. And then the kind of rectangle section that um, zooms in on those symbols over on the far right of the screen, we have our battery power gauge. We have a low battery alarm symbol. We have a device malfunction alarm, or what we call a red heart alarm. And that is our most highest priority, most serious alarms that the controller can have. And then we have a device function warning alarm that we call the yellow wrench alarm. And this is a lower priority alarm when the controller emits this alarm. And this picture here shows all of the different lights that can be illuminated. Um, and what they look like and their different colors. Um, obviously, the higher priority of the concern, the, the red, the more red the, the light is going to be. So green for everything being good, yellow lights for, hey, something's wrong here. It's not a big concern, not a drastic emergency, but it needs your attention. And then red for things that need immediate attention. The nice thing about these controllers, and this is true for all of our current devices, is when there is an alarm, it tells you on the screen what alarm is, is triggered and also what to do about that alarm. So if we look at the top middle screen there, uh, the small font is telling us what type of alarm it is. It's a controller fault alarm. We can see that the yellow wrench is illuminated and the, the directions for how to solve this alarm is to simply call the hospital contact. And so that would encourage patients, caregivers to call us on the VAD team. And depending on which alarm is triggered, we would walk them through different steps or have them come into the hospital for us to address it further. Notice on that screen, the green pump running symbols are illuminating. So we, are, uh, we do know that during this alarm, the pump is running and this alarm is not impacting the pump function. In the lower left, we have a low flow alarm. You can see that the red heart is illuminated and notice that the green pump running symbols are not on. So in this instance, that pump is not running, uh, which would contribute to there being low flow. And then on the lower right, we have a situation where all power has been exhausted from the controller. And so the controller is saying connect power immediately 
the half moons next to both of the power sources, both of the power cables are illuminated yellow, letting us know both cables uh, have a connection issue. We have a red battery that is illuminating, and then also our red heart is illuminated. The red heart is illuminated because if you notice, once again, the green arrows are not lit up. So this is a situation where the patient ran out of power completely and therefore the pump stopped. And this is what the screen would look like. Now, one thing that I wanna point out, if you look at the two lower screens, you might notice that there is a countdown or a timer on the bottom of the screen. And I do want to emphasize that is a countdown, or sorry, that is a timer and not a countdown. That is a timer. And it's telling you how long that alarm has been active. Um, although some people have been confused by that timer and they've thought that it was a countdown and they thought, oh no, it's going to stop running in 11 seconds, you know, if I don't do something now. But actually it's the opposite, it's just telling you how long has that alarm been active for? A key thing to note about HeartMate batteries in particular is they do have to be calibrated every so often. It turns out to be about once a year they need to be calibrated. And their battery charger, the patient's battery charger, will alert them when those batteries need to be calibrated. And the biggest thing that happens when the batteries are not calibrated is the power within the battery doesn't actually match the power that's being displayed on the battery fuel gauge that you see pictured here. So just like in the picture here, if, they're, if your batteries are not calibrated, you might see five green lights and think that your battery is completely fully charged. But in reality, the battery might only be 40 or 50% charged. And so that's a symptom of batteries not being calibrated is you think they're charging completely and they're just not lasting very long, but in fact, they just need to be calibrated so that way the charger can uh, charge them completely. And this is what it looks like when you put a battery in the charging slot that needs to be calibrated. For five seconds, the charger will display this symbol with the appropriate number in the middle of the slot that you put the battery in. And the patient simply has to push the button for that number. So in this case, battery number four, they would push number four, and that would start the calibration process. The calibration process takes about 12 hours to complete. And should the patient remove the battery at any time during that calibration process, it will have to be started all over again. Now, the nice thing is, uh, although the charger can only calibrate one battery at a time, it will charge three other batteries while it's calibrating the one battery. Now, something added uh, to the HeartMate 3 I mentioned earlier is the modular cable and the modular cable connection. And this is very important that uh, both patients and caregivers keep an eye on this connection and make sure that it is securely connected. Uh, we don't want that to come apart inadver inadvertently. And should it come apart, these pictures here show you how you would reconnect it. It does have two bright white arrows on either side of the connection. You would line up those arrows push the connection together, and then there's a collar that you would twist righty-tighty to tighten that connection and secure that connection. And your lower right picture shows uh, the proper way that connection has been completed. I want you to notice if you can see on the upper left picture, there's a yellow gasket, a yellow ring near one of those arrows. And in the lower right picture, you no longer see that yellow ring. That lets you know that it's been properly connected when you don't see that yellow ring anymore. And so here's an instance where the connection has been made, the two pieces are physically together, but that collar hasn't been tightened to secure the connection, and therefore you can still see that yellow gasket. Now, one of the things that patients used to take home, but they no longer take home, is a power module. Um, even though the patients no longer use this, they were upgraded to that mobile power unit that I showed you earlier. We still have to use the power module in the hospital, and that is because the power module is the only thing that a monitor can connect to. So every patient that gets admitted uh, to the health system, they have to be given one of these power modules, and they will use their wall power from the power module. And then if should we need to make any speed adjustments or see the history to their, their LVAD controller, 
then we can come by with a monitor, quickly connect to the power module and make those necessary adjustments or see that data. And this here is our latest generation of monitor. It's actually an iPad with uh, special Avid software on it. And on the monitor, you can see pump numbers like their speed, their flow, their power, and their PI. We use the monitor, like I said, to make speed changes. We can see their controller and alarm history. And then from the monitor, we can download that controller and alarm history. And that is a basic overview of VAT equipment. Okay. Thank you, Andy, so much for sharing that with us. We appreciate it. You're welcome.